Welcome everyone to another episode of Get Tech Smart. I am your host, Flo Nicholas, and well, we're here again talking everything tech that's happening right here in New Hampshire. So I've been trying to get this organization um, on the stage here with me. It does make sense for them to be here because they were, they are the New Hampshire Tech Alliance. So uh, I mean, finally, uh, welcome. Uh, Julie DeMars, so <laughs> Executive Director, and Stephanie Baxter, you are the Director of Programming and Engagement. But welcome back, because you've been yeah. here before when we did an episode on <clears throat> cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. But we're here to talk about the New Hampshire Tech Alliance. Finally. <laughs> Finally, right? We need to talk about why people need to realize that uh, New Hampshire is its own Silicon Valley, right? Mm -hmm. We hear about all the hot tech happening in Atlanta, as well as Texas, and sometimes you hear a little buzz in Florida, but there's buzz here in New Hampshire, correct? Absolutely. I think it's so New Hampshire, the fact that we don't talk about our success and sort of growth and everything that's happening in tech. We're a very humble population. Um, but when you look at the technology that's coming out of New Hampshire, not only is it competing with those bubbles like Silicon Valley, um, Boulder, all of the tech hubs that you think of, it's really creating its own name um, and it's supporting a lot of the large technology companies that are coming out of those hubs and are known more globally. So really without New Hampshire, right. none of what's happening in those other tech hubs is possible. So let's do like a little history here. Cause yes. normally like when I meet people and they're like, oh, you're, you're that tech girl, you're in tech. Mm -hmm. And then people want to introduce me to you guys and I'm like, no, I'm already connected. But they use another name. They, they call you guys like the high tech Yes, the right. New Hampshire High Tech Council. So let's talk about that kind of history from the name High Tech to now the transition into New Hampshire Tech Alliance. Absolutely. So the New Hampshire High Tech Council was founded in the early 80s. And in 2018, the New Hampshire High Tech Council rebranded to the New Hampshire Tech Alliance. And the reason for that was because it brought two additional programs into its fold, which was Alpha Loft and Live Free and Start. Alpha Loft was focused on supporting startups through accelerator programs, and it also had a co-working um, space available to the um, startups that it worked with. And then Live Free and Start was focused on the evangelism of entrepreneurs in New Hampshire, telling their story, talking about what's happening. Um, so those entities came into the Alliance, um, and the rebranding to Alliance was very intentional because I think at our core, what we are is the connective tissue to everything that's tech in New Hampshire. So, um, and don't feel bad, the people <laughs> on our board, and I catch myself sometimes still referring to the Tech Alliance as the it's New high Hampshire tech. High Tech Council. <laughs> um, so we're basically New Hampshire High Tech Council 2.0. It's, it's the evolution of um, the Alliance into who we are today. Yeah, so I love it, yeah. yeah. So I consider myself a tech baddie, okay, mm -hmm. which is somebody who loves all things technology. Uh, and you know, I'm a huge advocate for promoting technology right here in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So you know who else is a techie baddie? You too. <laughs> I see you guys <laughs> at all the events going on. So I want you to explain to me the dynamics of your relationship. You know, in terms of when we'll start with uh, with you, Stephanie, and your role, uh, and in terms of uh, you know being out there doing the engagement and programming. Uh, what do you do? All day. <laughs> what don't I do? Right. Some days that is what I love saying. Very yeah. Fair. yeah. So I oversee all of our programs, our events, our membership engagement. So a typical day is different every single day, but we have, I'll just touch on our events real quick, kind of an overview of what we offer. So we have four major signature events. We have a tech social event. We have our tech women awards where we award a tech professional of the year who is Flo. Hello, Hudson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, as well as a tech educator and a tech student of the year. Um, along under that umbrella as well with our tech women programming, we have our tech power breakfast that feature female speakers, um, whether it be a professional development topic, a technology topic, personal development, we kind of rotate through those throughout the year. Um, we have our Innovation Summit, which is our very exciting event in the fall that we have. It's in person, talking about the future of tech in New Hampshire. Yeah. Um, where is tech going? Who are the leaders? What's coming in the next decade or so? Um, so that's a great event. And then our Product of the Year competition is our most fun event, I would yeah. say, uh, competition style. So 
Um, that's kind of our event side of it. And I also work with all of our members. We have about 250 company members throughout the state. So I help them with branding and marketing and hiring. We have a job board. There's many different things we do yeah. to kind of get them connected. You know, we're very well connected throughout the state with other resources. Mm -hmm. So that's a big part of what we do is connecting businesses with the resources they need, whether that be a legislator or a business partner or a new customer or anything they need, really. Right. We're constantly facilitating those relationships. Yeah, and the, the Innovation Summit was, was fantastic this year. And, and one thing to know is that the New Hampshire Tech Alliance is not just for strictly only, you know, tech entrepreneurs and some business owners. Mm -hmm. They were students mm -hmm. at the event. Yep. Uh, so let's talk about a little bit more about that aspect of how you guys are kind of engaging students to be part of this tech ecosystem. Absolutely. Yeah, all of our events are open to students. We offer free tickets. Um, so there'll be certain events where we'll do a, an extra outreach to get students to come, depending on what we're doing, where we're going. Um, we've hosted in the past some career fairs for students as well. Um, our recent Power Breakfast had about 10 different nonprofits that yeah. all provide education in the STEM space to students, so amplifying their voices. And let's name a few of well. them. Yeah. Because there were some yeah, good some ones there. Some guests on here, the Steve Science Center. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, Media Power Youth was there. Uh, Girl Scouts. The Girl uh, was Scouts. there. Girls Inc. Girls Inc. Girls at Work. Yeah. Girls at Work. First was there as yep. well. So, yeah, good engagement. Now, Julie, yeah. I mean, you're essentially like the head uh, corporate tech baddie, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is your mission when what is your vision to carry out the mission for the New Hampshire Tech Alliance? Yeah, first of all, I just get a good chuckle when I hear you say that, because if anyone has ever tried to help me troubleshoot a computer, <laughs> you know that I am not truly a tech baddie yeah. to my core in that sense. Um, but our mission is essentially creating a strong, interconnected community. Um, I think really elevating ourselves as being, like I said, that connective tissue to connecting technology companies to resources, technology companies to talent, and really telling the story of what's happening in New Hampshire. So I think when I look ahead a couple years, if we can successfully kind of change the narrative of New Hampshire, right? I think yeah. one time I heard New Hampshire referred to as the old and cold state. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, and really shift perspectives to let people know that this is a tech hub. There is a ton of opportunity with regards to tech employment. Our students don't necessarily have to go elsewhere to have right. the quality of life that you would have in San Francisco, Boulder, Austin, right? So there is a ton of things happening here. Um, in New Hampshire. So we've known, especially post pandemic, that our role really needs to be focused on telling that story um, and also telling the story of our members, being a platform to amplify the good work that they're doing right. um, to each other and to people outside of New Hampshire. No, and that's and that those stories are important, right? Yeah. Because like you said, it's we've been we've been referred to as old and cold. <laughs> there is no old and cold here. I am here in New Hampshire, yeah. so don't have to worry. But let's talk about what we're seeing in the headlines mm -hmm. that might be scaring some people away from the tech industry. Mm -hmm. You guys are nodding your head so you know exactly what I'm talking about, which is mm -hmm. the tech layoffs yeah. uh, that we're seeing from a, a lot of these big tech companies. Yeah. Um, are we feeling any impact here in New Hampshire? Yeah, you know, I don't want to say that we're not feeling any impact at all. Um, what I will say is those layoffs feel like a larger sort of self-correction, mm -hmm. um, responding to really fast growth um, and really high numbers. But when you look at the overall percentage of people that are being laid off in tech, those numbers seem huge when you see the headlines, right? right. A layoff of 40,000 people. But really, the under um, we're looking at less than 3% of the overall tech workforce in, in the United States. And in New Hampshire, I think for years, the challenge has been filling some of those 
those talent deficits, right? Um, so for us, it's a, it's a correction in a different way, right? There's more opportunity in terms of hiring some, from people who may live here and work for a global tech company and now they're on a new journey and need right. to land somewhere else. Um, so I think, um, I, don't, I wouldn't say that New Hampshire is completely insulated from it, but when you're looking at tech employment overall, especially in this state, there's still a ton of opportunity. Um, and it's a real opportunity for the employers as well to bring on some really strong talent who may not have otherwise considered a New Hampshire company. Yeah, you make a great point because when I get interviewed for a podcast, that's one of the, the number one thing I hear all the time. Yeah. Like, well, why, you know, they have this tech layoffs. And I'm like, well, if you look at the tech layoffs for a lot of mid size, small mm -hmm. size organizations, they're like, wow, we can finally compete and mm -hmm. get talent because mm -hmm. for the longest, there's like you said, there are people who struggle yeah. to get that talent because mm -hmm. everybody's like, you know, has this perception that if I want to get into tech, mm -hmm. I need to go work for Google. Mm -hmm. right. I need to go work for Microsoft and Amazon. Mm -hmm. How do we change the story? Because people tend to be scared when they hear the word startup. Yeah. Mm. Right. <laughs> How do we change the story to for job seekers or for students who are graduating from these colleges here? UNH, you know, Manchester Community College or Nashville Community College, for example. How do we change the story to say, you know, you guys should really give startups an opportunity because there are mm -hmm. some startups that like Canva. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Canva started from just like a, a woman who was a student, you know, working with, with students, you know, just trying to, you know, figure out how to create, you know, just this engaging platform of creating all these various activities. And now it was a billion dollar industry. <laughs> right. And I, I have it. I'm addicted. Thank God yeah. for Canva. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so how do we kind of change that narrative to tell people you can get a job in a startup company and, and be successful? Yeah. So, you know, it's funny because I want to go back to your point about layoffs because yeah. I think that is changing the narrative mm -hmm. organically, right? So you have all of these people who their sense of security was a big tech company, right? Oh, I don't want to, I, I don't want to take a risk with a startup. A career with Google seems more secure, right? right? A career with one of the big names in tech feels like the right move. And now all of a sudden we're seeing that those secure roles are the ones that have been impacted and they're self-correcting that really fast growth. Um, so I think naturally some perceptions might have been shifted there where maybe there are oppor other opportunities in smaller technology companies. Um, and then at the same time, I think post-COVID there's been this really, really dynamic shift towards quality of life, right? Yeah. Um, finding that work-life balance and being able to not have the 40-hour work weeks or jog on your lunch break or take a kayak out or hang out with your family at five o'clock and not be plugging in and punching in until eight or nine. And I think that that reprioritization of that balance will also draw people to smaller firms and smaller organizations where people know, okay, I'm not just a number. My performance isn't only being tracked on metrics. It right. also has to do with the relationship that I have with smaller teams. So I definitely think um, when you think of our role in this, it will be telling those stories of yeah. the startups that are doing really cool things. I think of like Spot On or um, the electronic dog collar, <laughs> right? Yeah. How fun is that? And I think they have a culture where you can bring your pet to work. Oh, so wow. there's going to be a cultural appeal with companies like that. And then you look at what's happening in the med tech space with Army and um, regenerative tissue manufacturing in, in um, right in the mills. And that's exciting and fun in its own regard. So I think people are reprioritizing a lot of things and there's so much happening here in New Hampshire that that story and that narrative and that perception is gonna change on its own. Yeah, what, what's your take on that? Stephanie? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with all of that and I think it comes back to the storytelling piece. Right. right? Yeah. There are companies here making parts, going up on rocket ships, yes. autonomous vehicles. Yeah all sorts of different things, you know, safety equipment for our military. I mm -hmm. mean, there's so many unique companies here mm -hmm. that just do such different things. And to Julie's point earlier, right, you know, we're the supporting piece to those larger companies. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just an awareness issue, right? right? It can be a fun place to work and do all these types of things. And it's just the education, making sure people right. know about it. So, right. you know, um, relationships with 
the local colleges and universities are important mm -hmm. and we were developing those and getting the word out that way too. Exactly. And, and I think telling that narrative, hey, you can bring your dog to work, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's fantastic. So I think that's a unique way of where tech companies here can lure, you know, employees to stay. And I mean, for me, I'm always, you know, talking about how even we have a lot of lower cost of living. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, when I go visit family out of state, you know, I'm just going to the grocery store. I'm like, oh my goodness, what? <laughs> Like, well, I'm gonna starve while I'm here, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, every, you know, things are relatively a bit more affordable than if you do cross the border. Mm -hmm. but, but we, we also have larger employers as well. Fidelity has a team of over a thousand tech professionals. Yeah. Liberty Mutual is a huge tech component to it. So if you still want that enterprise level experience, mm -hmm. there are those companies here. Their tech teams are based here too. So it kind of, it's the best of all worlds for those who want to be in the smaller organizations or right. a startup or a mid-size, like we check all of those boxes. Yeah, and, and I'm also seeing um, a kind of like a movement where your non-traditional mm -hmm. companies are saying, well, we do tech as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and a great example is, you know, Delta Dental. You know, they're mm -hmm. like, hey, we are becoming extremely digital. They're actually mm -hmm. going to be coming. I'm working, coordinating with them to come on the show yeah. because they feel like, you know, hey, when we think tech, again, you know, let's not kind of have our mind in the box off your typical, you know, tech companies like Google and Amazon. Tech doesn't really, Home Depot, Lowe's, right. they all have mm -hmm. tech departments. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I like the fact that you guys are mentioning, you know, going out into the community. Mm -hmm. um, and because, like you said, that awareness piece is, is so critical. Mm -hmm. um, so what type of community engagement activities um, are you guys rolling out? Because uh, I know I'm, I'm seeing events popping up in the next yes. couple of months. <laughs> I think we are community yeah. engagement <laughs> by definition. <laughs> um, and I'll definitely let um, Stephanie speak to that. But I want to say that you are absolutely correct. When we talk about tech, every tech is uh, transcends virtually every industry, right? Northeast yeah. Delta Dental is a member of ours. Um, so when, you, when you're thinking of Tech Alliance members, a lot of times people think, right, software, hardware, right. IT support companies, but tech spans all sectors. Um, and our role in that is making sure that all of technology workers have a community and a place to convene. Um, so I'll let Stephanie speak to the <laughs> community. Uh, yeah, and I think I think it, one but. of the challenges in New Hampshire, right, is everyone's still a little bit siloed. Mm -hmm. You know, people mm -hmm. on the seacoast don't know what's going on in the Upper Valley. Yeah. Upper Valley doesn't know what's going on in Nashua. So mm -hmm. from a community relations point of view, there are pockets of support for the tech industry all over the place, but nobody is talking to each other. Yeah. So we're looking to be that central hub where we know Connectors. what's going on at UNH, we know what's going on at Dartmouth, we know what's going on everywhere. And that way, you know, we are we are the staff of the Tech Alliance. Yeah. Right. So yeah. we can't do everything. Um, so we need to be able to be knowledgeable about where people can go to get resources, um, right. many who have been on this show. So nice. yes, um, I'm, I'm here to help. Okay. I'm yeah. No, oh, this show has been amazing <laughs> for us. I share the episodes. I do everything because it's it's just uh, another way of it. You yeah. know, telling the story. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that's why I I, I created the show mm -hmm. because I I was one of those people who I'm so fascinated with with technology, and I've been in tech for over ten years, mm -hmm. uh, and. I was always talking about things going on outside New Hampshire. Yeah. And then like one day I was just like, I, I saw a map. What triggered it, I saw a, a map. Yeah. And in New Hampshire, it was for legal technology. And New Hampshire was not on the map. And I'm like, oh my goodness. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. kind of triggered me to do more research. <clears throat> and that's when I'm like, I found the New Hampshire Tech Alliance. And then I was like, what can I do? I'm, I'm here on social media, promoting other states. I need to pivot this to put that spotlight. Uh, on our state, so that that's what got me really focused on just getting as many guests here as possible. Mm -hmm. I do. I'm, I am trying to get the dog collar. Uh, what's the name of that company again? Spot on. I'm trying to get Spot on mm -hmm. on the show as as a mommy of a dog. What do mm -hmm. they call them? For a baby. Yeah. Uh, I would love uh, for them to come on the show. So if you guys can make those connections, no Absolutely. problem. <laughs> that is um, that is literally what we do. Yeah. Okay, um, good. It's funny because we send along a member benefits package to our members and also prospective members. Um, but there is so much that we do behind the scenes on a regular basis that 
doesn't fit nicely into a box on a piece of paper. Yeah. So when Stephanie and I leave here, we can absolutely go and do that introduction. And I think yeah. you've experienced us being sort of that um, conduit between you and maybe yeah. potential speakers. And that is something that we are doing on a daily basis, fielding inquiries, asking for introductions to our member companies, asking questions for resources throughout the state. Um, and we spend a lot of time um, doing the handoff or doing warm introductions. Um, and we're in good company in wanting to tell right. the story of tech in New Hampshire and, and do that um, because it's what we're most passionate about is really linking those silos and, and being, being the conduit for technology growth here. Yeah, and I think the best part of being in New Hampshire is that people are receptive to those intros. Yes. You know, I've lived in yeah. other states and it is not like that. Yeah. So the, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. effort that we are able to put in is reciprocated. People yeah. love that warm intro. They love, you know, the handshake, meeting for coffee. That's how business is done in exactly. New Hampshire. Yeah. So we're happy to do it and, you know, the benefits are sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and I love the networking events. Uh, that's where I, I occasionally come and scout for <laughs> guests on, on the show. Yeah. And, and you, you just meet people who are just creating amazing technology, right? Mm -hmm. Some of it goes over my head completely, mm -hmm. yeah. but some of it I'm like, okay, I get what you're trying to do here. I wish I thought about mm -hmm. this first. Mm -hmm. um, what are you seeing in terms of technology as I guess the, the, the buzz, what, what's trendy right now and in the tech sector in New Hampshire? Yeah, I feel like AI has been trendy mm. for, for years. Um, but honestly, there's not a single vertical that we're seeing like too much growth in one area. I think tech as a whole is, is really growing in New Hampshire in a number of different pockets. Of course, everything that's happening with the Advanced Regenerative Manufacturing Institute mm -hmm. Army um, in Manchester has had a real gravity in terms of attracting companies that are in that space and then also attracting the technology companies that will be necessary to support the growth of an entire industry. Right. Um, so I think we find ourselves talking about that a lot because I don't know that people have caught on to how transformative that will be for the state, an entire industry will likely be headquartered here and well known throughout the world. Right. Um, and we have to be able to train workforce to step into those roles. So that's definitely one I think that we talk about a lot, but in our day to day, we're interacting with companies from all over the map. Like Stephanie mentioned, um, I'm picturing rogue space systems mm -hmm. that are sending yeah. things up into space, dealing with um, space robots, right? Yeah, they're, they're cleaning uh, things in space. That's, absolutely. Uh, that's what I kind of got from when I chatted with them a little bit. Yeah, and then and those are the, some of those conversations where yeah. when they really get into it, it, it is so far over our heads. Right. But we know that it's really cool and fascinating. And like Micros up in Claremont, New Hampshire, I think it was the second or third time I've even been to Claremont. Um, they're doing the microprocessor cooling systems for huge names, some of them that cannot be named, right? Wow. Um, and there's dozens of others, and I, I feel, I'll feel remiss after to not be able to point to all of it, yeah. but there's growth in virtually every vertical within tech right now, especially in New Hampshire, cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you have plenty to add, but. <laughs> yeah, no, and I think that's the beauty of New Hampshire, because even a few years ago, I mean, it really is spread across. There's very, there's some competitors here and there, but it's not like you're in Cambridge and every company is a biomed tech company right. and every company is competing against each other. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. It really is spread out and we're seeing growth, but still spread out with the exception of the Army project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which and should be specific. But. Yeah, and that's a huge project for the state, mm -hmm. uh, which could potentially open up, um, well, not potentially, it's, it's going to open up uh, a lot of uh, demand mm -hmm. in terms of for jobs, uh, job opportunities for people right here. In, in the state. Absolutely. Yep. So at least that part is good. So let's talk about this little elephant in the room. Uh, we know with tech, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's typically has been a male dominated industry. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit more about, we, we mentioned the Power uh, Tech Breakfast, where you, you're bringing in very inspiring mm -hmm. um, and motivating female speakers. I just want to touch upon, you know, also that mission uh, for New Hampshire Tech Alliance to really kind of create this need for more representation uh, in, in, in the tech industry. 
-hmm. Yeah, I think we're going at it at this point now the same way we're going out at promoting the tech industry through storytelling. So we've started a video series featuring women in tech um, in hopes that as we just tell the story right. more, it'll encourage more people to, more girls to get interested in STEM by promoting all of the nonprofits who have programs for female students or students um, in general, you know, to help just get that word out. So using that storytelling right. again, um, and just that video series has been really well received. Our Tech Power Breakfast, the awards we do each year, are all critical to, to that mission. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And to that point, I think representation is everything. Also being present is right. everything. So I'm thinking back to the last event that we were at with you, the event that you sponsored over at, um, at UNH. Um, and when people were doing introductions, talking about how they had met people in the room, I felt like a number of them came back to, oh, we met at a Tech Alliance right. event. <laughs> um, so for a while, we tried sort of stepping in and doing some of our own DEI programming. But then we recognized that our strength is being the connectors right. and being a, a, an ally in the sense that we are pointing people to opportunities, doing the storytelling, being present at the table, because I think being a participant matters and being right. able to tell the story of other organizations that are doing the work and doing it well um, is equally as critical, right? The storytelling not only goes for individuals in tech who, who have essentially really beat some odds, right? right? But also pointing to the organizations that are supporting a more diverse and inclusive technology sector in New Hampshire um, is critical for us. It all, it all comes back to Alliance. Right, right, no, definitely. But yeah, it's really important the New Hampshire Tech Alliance isn't just focused on just the entrepreneurship, but also that exposure to, to STEM mm -hmm. and, and being a connector. Uh, to, to students you know, at the uh, Innovation Summit. We had students from, I think, the Academy of Science and mm -hmm. Design. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And at first I was like, huh, those are some really young tech professionals. And I ran into some of the students in the bathroom and they told me, yeah, you know, as, as part of you know, their hours at school, mm -hmm. they kind of have to attend these events, you know, get more of the hands-on experience. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really curious to know uh, if you're seeing a lot of tech companies uh, who, who are members uh, offering, as part of the job board, a lot of internships, especially mm -hmm. to younger students, um, or what partnerships you guys are trying to work on to, because I mean, th those kids are the future, right? They're the mm -hmm. future tacky stars and professionals. Yeah. Yeah. So our, um, we, we frequently promote internship opportunities from our members, and it, it's a really easy ask when we have that request because we have such deep meaningful relationships with so many educational partners so the academy for science and design we know who to reach out to to say hey do you have any students that are outstanding in this area that are, might be looking for an internship so those are easy asks over email but our relationship with higher ed um, partners and also regular educational k-12 through um, partners goes even deeper than that so in the past we've had the opportunity to judge and have our member companies sit on um, panels that judge the senior projects for the Academy for Science and Design. Um, so a lot of the time we're creating opportunities where our members have the opportunity to connect with students face-to-face, -face, right, which has so much more value than sending over an, e uh, an email with a resume right. saying, hey, would you be interested in an intern? And a lot of times I think those connections are made and we can't even measure it because they've connected at one of our events and they got talking and maybe a business card was passed that said, hey, reach out to me when you're looking for an opportunity. Um, and I bet there's more times than we can count on two hands or maybe, maybe all four of our hands um, that that has happened. So um, maintaining those relationships with educational institutions is, I think, critical to our mission. That is our talent pipeline, right? right. And for us to feel comfortable and have connections where we can reach out and help make those connections more organically than an internship job board, I think that's when it's most effective. Of course, we do have our job board right. and there are internship um, job board resources which we share freely with our members. I think Stay Work Play has them um, and we can pass them along. But I think those face-to-face -face 
connections can't be beat and so our sweet spot is creating the opportunity for those to happen yeah and I think just recently too and I think it's industry specific like cybersecurity yeah. is very big into interns right now so we hosted a networking reception at Manchester Community College as part of their cybersecurity summit to for businesses to come and meet students and that was really well attended mm -hmm. um, UNH has a program where they offer a stipend to startups to have an intern so it's almost free, practically free for a mm -hmm. startup. And we had many of our startups take on interns from UNH. That's so, awesome. yeah. And we'll yeah. be taking on interns <laughs> from UNH. <laughs> <It's as well. laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think this is great. I think this yeah. goes to those, the community building, yeah. the community partnerships, yeah. where you, you, we are like, you know, you have the, the Port Smith area, the Southern area, and then I feel like you have the middle area here. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just trying to get everybody, you know, to share those resources. Because at the end of the day, I always say we, we are in the same state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know when we work together and collaborate, share resources, we are really contributing to uh, the benefit of everybody. You know who's in the same state. So before we wrap up, um, for someone who's like you know, hey, I'm I'm thinking about being a tech entrepreneur. Uh, what is the one thing they 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 need to start besides contact you, of course. <laughs> uh, but I think one thing we probably didn't mention was there are some some hours available, office hours, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with uh, professionals. Mm -hmm. So let's let's try to highlight that a little bit. So someone who started, if you're like, hey, I really think I got something here. Before you want to go register and all that stuff, let's talk about those tech hours. Yeah, so I would say if it is a high growth technology startup, I know beside, you said aside from saying contact us, but I really, <laughs> see that as being the first step um, right. because we're so connected into so many of the resources I feel like we're a really good funnel um, to do a handoff and say okay this is what you need to consider so um, there are tons of resources which I think Stephanie was just about to speak to so I'll let her do that but I will say if there's an entrepreneur that doesn't really know where to start New Hampshire Tech Alliance is it that's not to say we'll hold their hand through all of the programming. There right. will very likely be a handoff into another New Hampshire entity that will be able to support them or various entities in the surrounding areas. But I would say the first thing they do need to do is contact right. us. Yeah, so our, we have office hours which are quarterly for startups. They're free for all startups. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a variety of different experts from marketing to product development, engineering, legal, insurance, anything really. So it's a great resource. And I think the one piece of advice I would give to an entrepreneur, especially if they're from the tech space, like if they're a technical person, you've got to get out and meet people. New Hampshire right. is so well connected and just mm -hmm. everyone's door is always open. Yeah. There are so many seasoned entrepreneurs who have had just decades of experience founding companies, exiting, doing it all over again. Um, so don't forget you've got to get out there and meet people because there are people that can help mm -hmm. everywhere and I find that especially in the tech space people are not familiar at all right that's not right. what they do it's not in their wheelhouse so there are a million resources out there and just getting out in the community attending an event contacting us because right. we'll make it much easier yeah. Yeah. that was the obvious yeah. part yeah. <laughs> you're obviously going to contact them but I guess I should have said what is the next step yeah. after yeah. that yeah. but you're, you're, you're absolutely right um, I, I think that they're, you know, going to a lot of these events, I've seen a lot of just people willing to be open and, and collaborate, know who you are and try to figure out, you know, uh, other areas where we can partner mm -hmm. and share resources. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're, we're about to wrap up. What is, I'm going to each give you a chance for kind of your call to action. Mm -hmm. Or if you forgot to mention anything, this, this is your time to do it. I'll start with you. Yeah. So I think to wrap, I'd say, the strongest tech ecosystems are connected tech ecosystems where people are plugged in and engaged and creating community um, with each other. So that's what at our core we're trying to do and, and that goes through ev for everyone in tech, whether it's investors, founders, right? Uh, startups, right. established technology company, uh, companies. Without community, a tech ecosystem essentially has nothing. It, it is not exactly. an ecosystem without community. Um, so my, I think, underlying and last note is get involved, get engaged, and, and be a part of our community. 
Oh, great. Show up to those events. They're yeah. really good. And sometimes <laughs> it's free food, so. <laughs> uh, I definitely echo all of that. And I would just remember the benefit of being in New Hampshire. We are yeah. a small enough state yeah. that, you know, you're not driving six hours to go to the next town. Like, we're so close. There's such an opportunity to grow companies, businesses, workforce, everything here. So really, let's take advantage of that. That's, that's very unique. Well said. Well, I'm happy that, you know, it's it's only taken a year, but you guys have <laughs> finally made it on the Get Tech Smart show. Mm -hmm. uh, I see future collaborations, of course, with my two wonderful friends here, uh, Stephanie and Julie. Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for coming out last week to support me uh, and my efforts with promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion. I appreciate you guys for that. And uh, for anyone who's looking to learn more about New Hampshire Tech Alliance, which is a nonprofit organization, by the way, Please feel free to contact them. Uh, and for students, great opportunity to start learning how you can pivot into tech and, and meet some of the tech stars that we have right here in New Hampshire. So everyone, thank you for watching another episode of Get Tech Smart. Stay tuned for more.